Hello, welcome to our channel. In today's video, we will discuss top three things that I wish I had known before arriving to Canada. Number one, internet and phone companies. Now in Canada, we only have three telecommunication network companies. That's it, you heard it, only three. And for that reason, the prices of telephones and data plans and internet usually tend to be very, very high because there isn't a lot of competition. Um, and those three companies at the moment are Rogers, Bell, and Telus. Um, now, we would recommend that if you do wanna get a phone, um, a plan, sorry, um, then you should definitely consider going to like the smaller companies. Um, such companies are like, wow, Mobile City, mm -hmm. Uh, Virgin Mobile. Uh, for example, we are with Fido, which branches off of Rogers. And also, maybe it's a good idea to wait if you're not in urgent need for, you know, a mobile phone or an internet, because sometimes there are sales on specific days, such as Black Friday and also Cyber Monday, end of November, both of them. And also there is Boxing Day, which is usually on uh, December 26th every year. Yeah. Number two on our list is living in big and small cities, the advantages and disadvantages. Now, disclaimer, I'm going to be a little bit biased because I definitely prefer living in small cities. Mm -hmm. um, and the contrary, my husband here yeah. uh, definitely prefers living in uh, bigger cities. Mm -hmm. um, now, small cities, the advantages of them is that they're usually quiet and peaceful, not very crowded. The city basically sleeps at 11 p.m. It's basically there's literally no one out when, if you go out at that time. Most places are also closed, of course. Not a lot of places that open 24-7, unfortunately, except the ER, of course. Um, and it's usually a place where people go after they retire. So for that reason, it is usually calm. People are just relaxed and more mm -hmm. laid back. Uh, but on the downside, the transportation here is usually not the greatest. Um, you know, probably will take you to get from like point A to Z, like about, I don't know, I'm gonna say like an hour because the buses don't come as frequent as they probably would in like bigger cities. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now in the country to small cities, big cities, they have usually higher rent and but more work options. So, you know, all big companies, uh, chains, everything, they're all in big cities. So you have okay of course higher rent but at the same time more options or more opportunities uh, for better jobs um, of course more transportation is so much better in big cities than small cities uh, subways buses it's all the time i i lived in toronto for three years and transportation is is perfect now also Toronto is a city that never sleeps. Museums, activities everywhere, it's always loud and uh, busy. You have also better uh, opportunity to, to study English in good schools such as ESL and uh, Link. So that's my preference, to be honest with you. There was one thing that I really loved about ha living in a big city like the GTA. Um, a lot of places were open 24-7, like Tim mm. Hortons or Shoppers Drug yeah. Mart or McDonald's. There were so many times, you know, in the middle of the night, I'm like, I'm craving McDonald's fries. Please go get them for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's the one thing where now he's like, sorry, they're closed. When you can do that here in, in small Windsor. cities. Nope, nope. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, it was an adjustment, but that's okay. I'm... I'll take I'll take the win, <laughs> which is living in Windsor. Um, so number three on our list today is the healthcare system. Um, so the emergency room is not actually an emergency room. Um, unfortunately, if you do go to the ER, it's a very very high chance that you're going to be waiting for at least six hours and that's being like kind of average, generous yeah. with the timing um of course children do have priority so you know they would probably see them a little sooner than three hours um but you know it all really depends on the city and where mm -hmm. and where you're you know 
where you're yeah. at. <laughs> Especially Friday night. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Don't go there. <laughs> Don't go. <laughs> mm, now also, um, I want to mention here that not everything is free. So dental care, eye care, medication, they're not free, especially for like um, elderly or senior people. They have specific program, which is ODSP. Maybe in the future we can talk more in details about uh, welfare and uh, ODSP programs. But um, nothing, nothing here is for free. It's um, a huge misconception. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's true. And also, when you arrive to Canada, first thing to do is to find a family doctor. It's super, super important because the family doctor, if you're sick and um, you can, you need like an appointment with a specialist. The first uh, st step here is to see the family doctor. Now the family doctor will give you the referral uh, to, to see a specialist. And to see a specialist in a small city such as Windsor, you need to wait at least around five to six months. Now in large cities, maybe this time will take you around three months on average. So don't be surprised if they give you an appointment after three, three to four months. That's very, very common here in, in Canada. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and that's everything for today. We really hope you enjoyed our video. Please be sure to subscribe by clicking the button below so that you could be notified when we post some new contents. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you and, and see, see you, you next time. time.